U.S. State Department named him American Ambassador of Music. Oh, oh yeah, we haven't done the sound test yet. <laughs> How's it sound? <laughs>
I played in a, my first eight years of playing around in Detroit, I played on a German Rassgaller. <coughs> um, and um, everyone sang these old German songs. If you should stay to find hope for our outside smiles. Oh, wow. Yes, I see that she has been there. Yes. <laughs> But um, I played a piano that was on that side of the room up on a little stand, and over on this side was this player piano. And when I'd walk in the door at 7 o'clock, I remember I'm self-taught, and I said, listen to that thing. And I'd say, how can anybody play like that? And I'd say, I hear music here in the left hand, music here, and I hear music in the middle. And sometimes I hear it over there and over there, too. And I said, I want to be able to play like that guy. Well, finally, the, the customers, they, let, they were real encouraging. They'd yell at me, keep going, Bob, you're gaining on it, that kind of thing. And, uh, finally, after a long, many, many months went by, a guy pointed out to me that three guys were playing on that piano roll. <laughs> oh, my God. It was brutal. So one of those piano rolls was a popular song out of 1905 called Ida, Sweet as Apple Asida. <laughs> I do a 
a tour of the Upper Peninsula. I, I don't know if you've ever been to our Upper Peninsula, but it's like going back to the 20s. You, are you from there? Where are you from? I'm from Detroit. Detroit. Oh, well, the Upper is... Yes, we've been up there. It's, it's weird. We sail. You sail. Yeah. It, it, it's beautiful, yeah. and it's weird. It's like going back to the 1920s. Detroit, yeah. Michigan. And, uh, well, you're from up the Upper? Detroit. Whereabouts? Birmingham. Birmingham. Okay. Okay. St. Joe. St. Joe. No, I'm talking about the Upper Peninsula. No, no. Uh, well, at any rate, they're strange. You know what they call these things in the Upper Peninsula? Stemware. <laughs> but then since we live below the bridge, we're trolls. Oh, it goes back both ways. <laughs>
and he got the band to play it.
wife Linda and I, we went uh, to New Orleans. We had some friends who were playing there, and we'd never been there, so we just wanted to go there. She's here somewhere. With a wife? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's just way in the back. We listened to the bands for five or six days. Then we decided we were, uh, we just wanted to get away from New Orleans and go for a walk or go somewhere. So we went out, uh, oh, I don't know, 30 miles east of the town, something like that. We don't know where it was now. But it was out in the uh, backwater areas. We saw this two run trail going back out into the woods. Well, let's go down there. And so we got our binoculars and we started going down there. The swamp on that side and not so much swamp on the other side, but we're going along through these trees and plants and things that we don't have in Michigan. I saw this black snake slip swimming along in the water next to us. And I said, well, we don't have water moccasins up north, but I, I'll bet you this is likely one of them. Let's keep going. We did. A few minutes later, we saw an alligator, but it was way up there on some sort of clump of stuff. Birds of all kinds. And after 30 or 40 minutes or something, we're just walking along. This is all, all new experience to us, you know, so going along. The two ruts ended and it turned into a one rut path, I guess. We're going along that. We're looking at all of this different stuff. But you know what? We thought we heard a piano of all things. We thought maybe is this a somebody's car radio or something out here? I don't know. We're going along. We look out this direction. There's three guys out there looking back at us. I said, um, whoops. There's some movie that had Burt Reynolds in it. And we wondered, what have we gone and done to ourselves? You know, we're guys come walking through the trees towards us. Really, we can't outrun them, we know that. They didn't have shotguns, thank goodness. They will come up to us and this one guy says, Howdy, mister. So I said, Hello. He says, What you all doing out here, mister? I said, Well, uh, we're up here just looking at birds and things. Um, here's my binoculars. You know, we, we've been to uh, New Orleans listening to the music. We, we like pianos and music and stuff. One of the other guys says, Y'all sounds like you're up from up north somewhere, from up, up in Yankee Town. I said, Well, yeah, I guess we are. guy says to me, he says, are you a revenuer? <laughs> no, sir, no, I, I'm not a revenuer. You know? I like to play pianos and uh, go around. We're down here vacationing so far. We you know, went like this for several minutes, too many minutes, but finally they light, lightened up on us. The guy says, you like piano music? I said, yeah. Come with us. God. <laughs> what are you going to do? So we went with them. Eventually we come to this clearing in the woods and over on the other side of the clearing there's this long shed with a sway roof that went like this. 
big wide door in the side of it and then a dirt floor. We go in there and we hear this piano right away. And
Um, oh, let's see. Did they ask you to play at the place? Um, <laughs> they asked me if I wanted to play the piano, and the answer is no. I haven't played in a long time. Oh. There's, uh, that's happened in a lot of places that I've gone to, where there's another piano player. And in that place in particular, you don't want to be better than the guy, and you don't want to be worse than the guy. So I haven't played in a long time. And among the professional piano players, we all do that. Uh, but that wasn't a, that, that was a different case. That was survival. <laughs> so, uh, hey, uh, you, there's a, you guys ever hear of, um, what was his name? Isidore Baleen. Isidore Baleen. He, he wrote a lot of songs in the early 1900s. But he changed his name to uh, Irving Berlin. Oh. <laughs> ah, now he's <you> heard of <laughs> Well, Irving Berlin uh, he wrote this beautiful old song, Always. these little office-sized publishers, 
they all had old out-of-tune pianos in there, and they're all sitting there banging away, I mean, five stories high on each side of the street for two blocks. So the became, place became nicknamed um, Tin Pan Alley, because you would walk just din coming out of both sides. So um, uh, Berlin was, he was one of uh, Tin Pan Alley's uh, most popular composers, of course. And one time uh, he did something tremendously interesting, and it was the first time in, in American popular music. He wrote a tune with a first half and a second half, and he wrote it in such a way they could sing the two of them on top of each other. No one had done that yet. <laughs> Sedalia. He 
went out there, got into the college. He had to have a job to support himself, so he got into another saloon. This saloon was up above a pool hall.
was a vaudevillian. His name was Bert Ren uh, not Bert Reynolds, his name was Bert Williams. Bert Williams was amazingly colorful. He was so popular, uh, he could fill a vaudeville house by himself for the whole night. Usually a vaudeville program they'd have eight or ten performers, jugglers, snake charmers, comedians, you know, there's everything. Williams was amazing. Him and his wife had won every dance contest in America. Um, hey, look at this. He's approaching with a towel. <laughs>
Corbin challenge for him. He did this incredible version. putting their melodies 
in between these left-handed beats. Now, if I, I'll play you something, um, and just notice that you hear the right hand hitting and the left hand in back of it. Can everybody hear your question? Yeah. 
Um, how do you work that? Could you do Claire de Lune here at once and do it, or is that not part of your theory by ear? How does that work? I don't really know how to explain this. I do know that when somebody plays something on any instrument or even an orchestra, um, I know every note that's coming out of it. Um, I know how music is created. It's created a, a, a chord in only three notes. And sometimes there's a fourth note with it. And once in a while, a fifth note. I, I know that. So it's based on three notes that make up chords. So to, I learned that when I was probably three or four years old. And it's just something I, I thought was simple. When I hear somebody playing something, like I said, I know every note that they're playing, and I can tell if they're using a, uh, a rolling bass. and because we were driving my dad's 57 Chevrolet Coupe and this the radio was playing and, I, and they were saying it was Beethoven's fifth piano concerto I said well it's nothing but an E flat chord all of this is just an E flat chord then to B flat E flat and he was writing these variations in E major with these chords. See, so all I know is that this is simple for me. That's all I can say. I know people have great difficulty trying to do this. I actually teach a course I'm playing by ear. Um, uh, every September in Michigan, it's four days long. It's a lot of fun. You'll learn a lot, whether you play an instrument or not. And um, so all I know how to say is, is that it's easy for me, and I don't know how I do it. <laughs> I saw a question back there. Where are you from? What's that? I'm from Detroit also. Well, I, I actually grew up north of there in Rochester. Right. Uh, and I came down and played at the Dakota Inn Rathskeller uh, for many years, for eight years of 64 to 72. Dakota, because this German bar was on the edge of Dakota Street. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so I, I loved playing those things. 
Um, yeah, so I was further north than you were, it sounds like. You said Birmingham earlier? Yes. Uh, I played at Charlie's Crab for many, many years oh, in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. Big, big seafood house. I played for Chad Muir for a while in the Woodward. Yeah. Any other questions? Have you ever composed music? Well, I've written all kinds of music. I wrote an opera. I've written, I've written everything from, if I call it country western, that'd be too gracious. I would call it the backwood chill. <laughs> I've written that kind of stuff. And I've written grand operas, The Legend of Suki. Hey, Bob, do the one you wrote about Memphis. Yeah. Oh, is that what I was telling you about? Yeah. It's a nice country song. It's very touching. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nick is aware of this uh, tune of mine. During the years I was playing around Detroit, I'd come up with these tunes, and I would never tell anybody that I wrote them. <laughs> because they were weird. <laughs> and I was getting nice reviews of the paper. I didn't want to tell them this stupid hillbilly song. So I, I blamed everything on Walker Hawkins, and I always said that this is some guy out of southern Tennessee who lives up on top of a mountain who's been sending me his poetry and wants me to write music on it. Be sure of this.
obviously can't sing this. <laughs> this is uh, from The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. You all know that story, Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman. The story is actually written, amazingly, on a true incident out of 1790 along the Hudson River. Sleepy Hollow, you probably know, is 30 miles north of New York City on the east side of uh, the river. The river is very wide back then, back there. Uh, they called it, the, the Dutch community of the 1700s called it an inland sea, so they called it the Tappan Zee, where the bridge. Well, Sleepy Hollow was right on the edge of the river. The, somewhere in the 1760s, oh, first of all, I'm, I'm telling you this so you just understand the little song that I'm going to play for you, and I'll tell you the words I want to try and sing. But uh, the people of Sleepy Hollow believed uh, in spirits very strongly. There's a whole section of their forest that was set aside for our, the spirits of our ancestors. It was a very holy section. We were allowed to go walking in it. We can go even hunting in it. Um, you have to get out before the sun goes down because it belongs to the spirits. Um, and somewhere in the 1760s, they said a monster had invaded their woods. The monster was the headless horseman. And uh, they, they were truly afraid of it. There were a lot of stories circulating back then about the thing. They feared it. So at any rate, now that you'll know that, uh, I'll tell you about this little aria that I'm going to play for you. <laughs> scene where uh, Katrina Van Tassel, that was the young girl that Ichabod Crane was after, Katrina and two of her lady friends, they go out into the woods on a Sunday afternoon to visit with the spirit of her mother, who's out there in the spirit land. And they encounter Ichabod Crane out there, being an idiot, um, and uh, which he was, he was really obnoxious. But Ichabod, um, uh, he had been hired, actually, back in the 1700s, he'd been hired to be the vocal instructor for their church as well as their school teacher. I know it comes out of the book that he was a school teacher, but he was a vocal instructor uh, for the church choir and so forth. He was actually pretty good. Uh, so I've got Katrina and her two lady friends, they go out into the woods and they encounter Ichabod. And they say, uh, uh, Meneer Crane, Meneer is a Dutch word for hair crane. Meneer, he said, what are you doing out here? Uh, you, you know, you're not supposed to be out here by yourself. And he says, I came out looking for the spirits. I haven't seen them. If I can't see them, then they don't exist, do they? So this kind of stuff is going on. Finally, he tells them spirits live in the ground. Oh, okay. So he's pretty disgusting. So finally, he says to Katrina, he says, You've been telling me that these spirits they live in a timeless world, a dream world of some sort. Will you explain that to me? So she sings the first verse of this thing. She sings um, about timelessness. Uh, if time became a page, invisible in air, then a thousand pages hang between me and over there. If the pages turn like books, then they'll turn where your eye looks. But if not, then they'll float anywhere in the air. Do they start where books leave off or end before they start? Are the sands within the hourglass near or far apart? Or rolled into a circle, no, fo no forwards, backs, or fronts, so that spirits, me, and ancestors all stand here at once? <laughs> So Ichabod goes on from that, oh, balder dash, and he's carrying on. He says, what is this about uh, dreams? How can, what do you mean they live in a dream world? And she sings, my dreams are very strange. I do not understand. My mother comes from somewhere, takes me by the hand. I recognize her voice from far across the sea, and she leads me to a place where I've been before, it seems. It's a thousand years before me from time beyond recall, that these places are familiar and somehow I know them all. My dreams are always reaching 
and calling from afar are dreams I've often wondered, the world beyond the stars. And then he continues ranting and raving. But uh, now, now you understand the little melody that leads up to this.
Okay. She's not here tonight. Oh. Uh, um, St. Louis Blues. 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 Anything from the sting? <laughs> <coughs> like what? <laughs> the entertainment. <coughs> oh, the entertainment. <coughs> Usually it requires a piano that's been tuned. <laughs> <laughs> One time I went to some place, oh, back, I, I had to play at some country club back in the 80s. They, the place called me up. Our piano player didn't show up. We could get over here, so I go driving 30 miles, running the door. And there's this spinet piano sitting out in the middle of a parquet floor, and everyone's through with the salad course, and I come running in. Hello, everyone. And so I started playing the entertainer, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> so simple and easy, but it wasn't. <laughs> and there were key changes that people didn't even hear. And see, so it, it's a very hard, see, I, I can play all kinds of, that's a three note chord, I can play all kinds of a five, eight note different chords, you know. That doesn't make it better. 
Um, so, so I actually I don't think I know how to answer that question. Is it, the, the hardest thing to do is to play a. Uh, Yeah. Say go blues. Say go blues. <laughs> 